Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Your makeup is terrible. Your makeup is terrible. Go ahead and start, Jean Paul. Okay, so we are we are here at the LBGTQ panel. I, it's even hard for me to say LBGTQ. Uh, yeah, at the uh, last manipulation of the LBGTQ movement. We're at the American Priority Festival. And yeah, at the American Priority Festival. And today we're going to be talking about what the heck the left has been doing to hijack the LBGTQ movement and what we have to do to stop them because it really. It's what well, we're going to talk about it today, but does the, does the left really have the right to claim ownership of LBGTQ people? And you know, what have they really done for, for gays and bisexual and the trans community in actuality, legally? To start out, is introduce each of our panelists. Um, yeah, my name is Ricky Rebel. I am a Billboard Top 40 recording artist. I toured with Brady Spears. Uh, at one point, and I had a record uh, called Boys and Sometimes Girls that I released in 2014, and um, it got a lot of support by the LGBT community because I was being very vocal about my sexuality, being very, uh, you know, just proud of, of uh, who I am as a person when it came to that. They really supported it. But when it came time for the Grammys, uh, I ended up wearing the Trump suit at the Grammys. And after I wore the Trump suit, it was a totally different story. The LGBT community, uh, especially the trans for some reason, like completely demonized me. Uh, many of the drag queens came out and, and called me all kinds of crazy names. They uh, said I was a quote, traitor to the community. Um, a lot of the press that were there were saying that we hope your babies die. Mm. They said things like, um, Trump hates your kind. Uh, and I just yelled at the press, everybody there that was there. I just said, you know, Trump wants to end AIDS. Okay? We're done with the conversation. No other president has ever been really truly committed in ending AIDS like our current president is. And I just had a conversation with Donald Trump Jr. last night, and he was telling me, like, I said, look, I really want to get involved because I want to help the LGBT community come together uh, with the right, and I also want the left to understand that, that there are many great conservative gay men out there. My name is Christopher Drew. I go by the adorable deplorable. I'm a video creator, and um, what I do is I try to um, I try to out the left on their um, weaponization of the LGBT community. I think it's really crazy that they use our sexuality as a tool, as a means of um, to get to get votes. I think it's really bad these days when it comes to being gay because, like Ricky, like Ricky, my story is similar. I come from Orange County, right next to LA, where he had um, his incidences happen, and I had people like coming after me left and right as well, the same way. In fact, I got assaulted at a bar. Like, it, I've been assaulted, my house has been vandalized, my car's been vandalized, I've lost like, a lot of clients. Um, it's just really insane to me to the degree of hate that they have for us on, that are conservative and LGBT. My name is Scott Pressler. I'm a conservative activist with over 364,000 followers on Twitter. I spent two years of my life working to defeat Hillary Clinton, and now I'm laser focused on re-elected Donald Trump. And how I'm spending the next year of my life is I'm not only traveling across the country teaching Republicans how to register new voters, but I am picking up trash in the urban inner cities in Baltimore and Los Angeles. But what some people don't know is I came out as gay after the Pulse nightclub terrorist attack. The very day after the nightclub attack, I saw Gays for Trump trending on Twitter, and everybody was attacking it and making fun of it. And I said, enough is enough. So I took a selfie of me wearing a wife beater and a Make America Great Again hat, and I posted on Twitter, we do exist, hashtag Gays for Trump. And that tweet changed my life forever. And that very day is the death threats that began from the left. And just like 
you all have been saying, the Democrats told me, I hope ISIS throws you off of a building. They told me, I hope you get AIDS and die. They call us homophobic. I don't understand how that works. I don't get it. But no, being a gay Republican isn't easy, but you all have elevated us, and you've followed us, and you've uplifted us, so no, we are also thankful to you, and we are a family, and I'm so glad to see at the American Priority Conference that they are giving the LGBT movement a voice here. Yeah. My background, my name is John Paul. They named two popes after me. <laughs> Time-wise, that's true. Um, and um, I can say, I am um, an open and out conservative, an open and out Catholic, and an open and out gay man. And um, my story goes back a little bit prior to these guys because I worked for a prior uh, presidential race. I'm not going to mention the guy's name I worked for in 2012. Um, and that's when the hate started for my friends, that I thought were my friends. Um, living in Boston, it's actually Madrid, the most intolerant city in the country, the most intolerant, politically intolerant state in the Union. Um, and you're not allowed to be um, conservative there. And if you're conservative and gay, then you're really not allowed. And I've got, I got death threats. I've got people, um, you know, no, no, no physical violence, but very close to physical violence threats. Um, and I, so I, I decided, you know what, I'm sick of it. And I decided to write a book called Cues for Conservatives to answer that and the, the, the left crazy, insane, rules for radical, Saul Alinsky style, you know, Basically, basic domination of the media to overthrow our culture and install socialism, communism, and totalitarianism. And because I wrote that book, I lost at least 50% or more of my gay friends and, and a lot of my straight friends. Just because I'm gay, I'm not stupid. I mean, really. Um, I stand with my brothers here on, on, on this panel. We're all, we're all fighting, and there's, there's millions more like us, and there's a lot, lot, lot more conservative gay people out there than, 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 than you know. Uh, but uh, the left uses identity politics, uh, and they, they're using identity politics to divide our country and pick and choose the sides they want fighting in their war against America. They think they own the LGBTQ vote, and we want to, and, and, right? and, and how tolerant are they of us, of, of people that, that are like us, right? So the question is, is, who are the tolerant ones? The right. Well, right. I can tell you what um, I've experienced. I've experienced that people on the right are exactly opposite of what we were told on the left. Yeah. I come from the left, and I was told that people on the right were very judgy, that they hated gay people, all of these horrible things. And we're right when I first came out, you know, the closet per se, from being um, a Trump supporter, I would I would have to deal with that, and I, I really thought to myself, like, now I'm going to be hated on both sides. I thought Democrats hate me. Well, the Republicans aren't going to like care, and they're not going to like me. I'm, and so I went to my first Trump rally, and that's where I kind of woke up, because I realized all these Christian people were praising me and loving me and like being really nice to me. And I saw people of all races, all backgrounds, all creeds, and I think that it was, it was a beautiful moment, and that moment it made me not be so afraid to be on the right. And then I started joining things, and I started going to different events and um, different conventions and stuff, and I've got nothing but love from so many people, and I have yet to meet that one Christian who hates gay people. The left manipulators, sorry again, I mean leaders, have its people on a false goose chase searching for this boogeyman, if you will. This boogeyman is a tall, older, white, rich male, and he hates black people. He thinks illegal immigration is all immigration. He is so racist that he has ties to the KKK. He hates gays and thinks they're gonna go to hell, and is afraid of Muslims apparently, and is so disrespectful to women and looks at them like sex objects. I know what you're thinking, Joe Biden. <laughs> but he's also considered to be a capitalist Republican, so it can't be creepy Uncle Joe. And what I see is all of us constantly searching for this boogeyman. And when we see um, his, some of his traits in some of our friends, we ostracize, we publicly shame, and we tell everyone who found them that we found them. And then our friends have to jump through a lot of hoops to prove that it's not them. And then, when they succeed, we move on searching again. This is something I'm seeing happening with everybody on the right and the left. Well, folks, I don't think this boogeyman exists. I have never met them yet, you know? Um, I really have never had harassment or anything from the right, but on the left, it was, there's been times in my life where it's like threatened. 
And so, um, it, I gotta say, again, a lot of you guys weren't here earlier, but he said to, um, thank you to you guys, and that's, that's true. We thank you guys, because you guys have been really, really good to all of us. And um, you guys have given us a platform to stand on. But um, yeah, definitely the left, their manipulation is really, really, it's dogmatic. Right, and there's nothing worse for the gay male than rejection. <laughs> <laughs> The shame of being rejected is the most fearful thing for the gay man on the planet. So, for us to be doing what we did, it's, it's an act, you know, it's an act against all of the, that, that thing that we, that most gay men have to go through. So I can't imagine what, what regular gay men are going through who are conservative. They're terrified. I'm a conserv conservative? Like when I did the walk, I did the walk away cam uh, campaign event in West Hollywood with Brandon Straw and uh, Mike, Mikey Harlow, and Blair White. You would, you I would love not. Blair, by the way, I love do you love Blair? Love we love her. Love she got mad at me recently, but we'll talk about that later. Slide into your DM. <laughs> yes, and it's a seventy-year-old straight white Christian male, the person that's most demonized in today's society, and he says, you've changed the way I think of the gay community. You've given me a different perspective. You've opened my heart and my eyes. And so I don't know about you guys, but I feel a responsibility as a gay Republican to set the example for what people see. So we show that through our actions daily, and we need to be that spot of love that we see out there. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I'll tell you, that experience is the best feeling I think I've ever felt. So like, when I think about all the bad things that happened to me while I was coming out as a Republican, I think about, is that worth it? And to be honest with you, those moments when I get those messages from some kind of guys and stuff, it's worth it. It's 100% yeah. worth it. There's been times where like children and stuff have messaged me and reached out to me who were uh, maybe into makeup or maybe um, gay and didn't get along with their parents. And um, after watching my videos and stuff, a lot of them say thank you because now they, they, they accept more things so them and their parents are getting along and stuff like that. It's the little things, but those things make it all worth it. And I would go through it again if I had to for the, exactly those reasons. Well, and real quick, I have a question for you. Do we look like Republicans up here? Do we look like Republicans? No, we don't. Especially us with all this long hair. He's tatted from head to toe. He's pierced. I mean, come on, these boots, I love them. And the, and the suit. But we, as this new Republican Party, what I really have to make clear before JP goes on, is we are a no judgment movement. Yeah. We are a movement based on love. And so the thing that I want people to realize is if you ever see one of us walking down the street, get it out of your head. Don't think for a second, oh, they couldn't possibly vote Republican. They couldn't possibly be a Trump supporter. No, we're gonna give everybody the time of day, even if they're wearing cat ears on their head. Word. You know, you're gonna give Party. That's right, baby. It's so cute. <laughs> We're going to give everyone dignity, respect, and reach out our hand because you can be surprised by that green hair, tatted, and pierced person. I just had to say that. Because that's what true diversity is. Yes. Diversity is in the mind. Diversity of thought. Does anybody have anything they'd like to ask before we move to the next question? Anything to share or any questions for the panel about this topic? Do we have an extra mic? No? No, I'll just... Yeah, I'll know. I've been involved in the United States and I was recently chairman in Los Angeles as well. I was recently chairman in LA County. I was in the highest turnouts. And I've had a lot of friends that used to buy some of your own public interest. They're in California and you can't tell them you're high. Yeah, so... We went to Pride. One of the reasons why um, people of your age are the reasons why I also um, 
get so angry at the LGBT these days because they don't pay respect to the people who really fought hard for our civil rights and our right to be equal. And we have had people that are still alive today that went through things like the AIDS crisis and such and got hated by everybody just for simply being gay. They went through that so we didn't have to. You know, so we didn't have to. So the fact that everybody plays victim so much on the left, that's one of the things that really got me interested in politics and got me going the way I'm going because of the fact that people like you are disrespected every day by the new gay community. And it, it's, it's incredibly sad. But yeah, thank you for what you've done for us so we can step up here on this panel. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So our, our next point is going to, is, is this. Uh, the Democrats, not only do they think they own us, right? But they think they own the movement. The question is, what did they do to earn that? What did they get Demo Up until 2013, when Barack Obama decided, who was always anti-gay marriage, and Hillary Clinton, by the way, is known to be a homophobe from way back. There's lots of evidence of that. They decided about four or five years ago, oh, we're going to support this group because we want their votes, right? Now the gay world has to believe, we're, we're supposed to believe like sheep, that, oh, Okay, we have this story that the because they've always been here with us. But what did they do to earn that? Politically. Nothing, because I would even say the first state to have gay marriage was Massachusetts, right? That's where you're from? Massachusetts had the first gay marriage. And Republicans. Then Mitt Romney was our governor, and he signed that. Interesting. Yep. Seven Republicans and one Democrat. That's the first state to give us gay marriage. That's right. Yep. So, I mean, politically, you're right. 100%. And the right has been there for us more than the left has. Well, I've got a question. What rights have been taken away from us since Trump has been president? Girl, I've been asking that every day. That Girl. <laughs> what, what rights? They're, they're terrified of our quote, our, our quote rights being taken away. That's why they call us traitors. And I'm like, I, that's my first question to you. First question to you, like, what rights have been taken away from you? How has your life become so horrible now that Trump is, is president? We got a question from my mom. It's not a yeah. question. <laughs> it's not a question. I think what you're always attacked with, what I see you're always attacked with, is trans in the military. Yeah. That, that is what you are always, yeah. always attacked with. So respond. That's the first thing people say to me. But what about the trans? <laughs> the trans. We're not trans. We're not. Well, first of all, we're not. We're not I'm not trans. You know what I mean? You're not trans. Whatever. I don't. That's like asking a Chinese man how they feel about, like, you know, Japan or Mexico or something like how, you know, or, it's a completely different thing. Gender is separate from sexuality, and that's what Blair White got pissed off at me about. She got mad that I said, I made a, a Twitter, I, I did a tweet, and I said that LGB, maybe we should think about, you know, separating the two, LGB, and then there's T. T is about gender. Has nothing to do with sexuality. Well, Blair says that. I'll Which there are only two. I know, and she got really mad at me. But that, but on private note. But I mean, I love Blair forever. Okay, <laughs> she's so smart and so funny. Period. I don't care whatever she thinks about me. But the point is that my, I got a lot of hatred. A lot. I got probably more hatred from that than wearing the the Trump suit at the Grammys. It was crazy. And, and I can say one thing is. I mean, I, I believe we all agree. Equal rights for everybody. We're all Americans. If you're a trans adult, we support support you. But that's a different argument than trans in the military. The well, military is a, a fighting force, and you can't have flat feet. Exactly. If you have a skin condition, if you're too tall, too short, you can't serve in the military. There, but, it's a very complex issue. Let me make this point. Not, it's not a transphobic policy to be for, for the for the U.S. government, the military, to say they're not going to have trans in the military. I'm going to say something. I love trans. First of all, on the camera, we're, we're on live right now, so. I love trans, period. I love all, you know what I'm saying? I love all people. You know, good people are great. I love all great people, good people. But the point is, is that the, the radical trans movement that's going on right now, the, the radical gender agenda is ruining it for all LGBT. They're trying to put hormone blockers on, on babies at a very young age. They're trying to, they're trying to put uh, biological males to compete with with biological females, they want to, to uh, put in the Equality Act. 
They want to put this thing called compelled speech in there, where we, are, we have to call them by their preferred pronoun. And if we do not, we're going to all, you know, we're going to get a, a whatever, fine. And if we, if we choose not to pay that fine, we can go to jail. The point is, is that that radical thing has everything to do with, with gender issues. Radical gender issues that have nothing to do with orientation. Well, I think it's not a conversation about what rights are being taken away from us. I think it's more, how is the Republican Party supporting the gay community? And I'm here to tell you that I am a big proponent of the Second Amendment, and I believe that armed gays don't have <laughs> my ability to protect and to defend my life from people that want to do me harm. Right. And again, I came out after the Pulse nightclub terrorist attack. I do support President Trump's extreme vetting to make sure that the people coming into our country don't want to harm me and believe that I do have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So the conversation should be no. President Trump is a president that supports the gay community, supports my constitutional rights to keep and bear arm and make sure the people coming in, I think it's a pretty low bar. Just make sure, you know, they don't want to kill me. That's it, that's a pretty, that's a low bar. So no, the GOP does support the gay community. And I, I got this hat on the Trump website. Like, that's right. This Look. is from Trump. <laughs> Trump put his name in rainbow on the back of it. So make America great again. And on the ones with the white embroidery don't even have Trump's name. That's so beautiful. That's actually, that says a lot. And, um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about with the trans issue. Um, we're not trans, but the thing about trans is, is that not going to the military saves lives. It's not a conversation even about losing anything um, except for their lives. Their suicide rate is at 49%. And when they go to the military and come back, veterans kill themselves at six times the rate of all civilians combined. So take all the, whether it's a trans, um, a teenager who's depressed, a divorcee, it doesn't matter, add that, like times that by six. And that's how many veterans kill themselves every day. So now if you stick a person who's already at 49% risk into that situation, and the only thing they do in between is learn how to shoot guns and be at war, I think that that's very um, horrible. So I tell trans people this, be here to hate me, but be here. So I'm never ever gonna support them going to the military. You can't go to the military, if you're, like he said before, like if you're flat footed, if you're in colorblind, you can't go. So I mean, it, it is a mental disorder, and it is what it is, gender dysphoria. So I do believe we shouldn't hate them, but I also don't think that we should be forced to, um, to fall into line with this whole gender mess, if you will. The Yes, on your, on your point with, with the trans and the military, I think the number one thing that, that was the problem that Trump was trying to say, that it was a big cost to the military. He mentioned the cost. Because they, so there were some, some trans that are, were using that as a way to, to cut off or, you know, cut off their thing or become, become the opposite sex, right? They were using the, the military and the tax, tax funding to get funding for their sex change operations, which are very expensive. I don't want to pay for someone's sex change operation. I, I don't want to pay for someone's nose job or their boot job. Well, that's actually the problem. Or anything. Like, I want, you know, I want it to go towards defending our country and serving the military, all those things. But that was, I think that was the main reason why Trump, Trump did that. And plus, he was listening to his, the counsel of his, uh, sorry, sorry, or generals. Generals, right? They're, they're, they're the ones that he gave, he, he gave them the decision to make and he followed. Yeah. But I think it's really sad that we don't have any other options for people like that at home. So the only options we give them is join the military. And then so you have a lot of people who are very desperate to be happy and desperate to be themselves all rushing to sign for the military. And that's why I was saying it's, it's murderous because um, they're at 49% risk of suicide. Now we're putting them into situations where they come home six times more likely to kill themselves. And the only way that, the reason why they're signing up by the droves, which is kind of funny actually, because it's like, don't you guys hate Trump? Like why do you guys all want to go to the military all of a sudden? Why does everybody want to go and like serve for the country? That's really crazy to me. But at the end of the day, it's, it's life threatening to them. And there's the only options to give them other than jail in Colorado and California. That's the only way they can get paid for it. You have a question? So I was, uh, I was a recruiter But when you put it in an environment like 
boot camp where it's extra stressful, they'll kill themselves at boot camp. They'll kill themselves after they get to the fleet because it's not really what they thought it was. And so you have to understand, like, whenever you have, not to discriminate against any type of person, but when you have somebody with a mental illness and you put them in a high stress situation and their job is stressful every day, all day, like you said, they do commit suicide at 100%. So that, that, and that's why I feel so strongly about them not being able to go to the military because I do believe that puts their lives at risk even more. And I think that's very irresponsible of us as a nation to go stand behind that and fight for that. Um, and of course, if you ask them if they're in there just to get their, their transitional or whatever, um, they're going to say no, you know, because that's what they're trained to do. It's just, it's really scary. And then at the end of the day, this is just our opinion. Okay, we're not allowed to have an opinion because they, they want to silence us. They want to take away all your platforms. The minute you say, oh, like what you were saying, I, I prefer, I personally think that there are, there are trans out there who could serve in the military if they're, like, if they meet all the requirements. Okay, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's just our opinions. Right? Whatever happened to us just having an opinion about something without, without our whole lives being destroyed, our whole careers being destroyed, not being able to use PayPal and, and our bank accounts. It's crazy. You know, it's, it's, you're not. Yeah, you have. You can't color outside the box. You have to follow. You have to be. For example, the him, her, they. I mean, what's retarded? What the heck does that have to do with being gay? It has nothing to do with being gay. But yet they jam it all together. The LGBTQ and all the other letters in, in, right in, in, the, in the acronym. And there's really no reason other than the left wants that identity block. They want to put us in that block and say, you have to agree to everything in this program, what including heck? socialism, including open borders. And I don't know what the heck being gay has to do with open borders, socialism, hating Christianity, right? Hating our country, but that's what they expect of us. And I was going to say, you know, earlier I made a joke that, you know, that um, I'm gay and I'm, you can be, that doesn't mean you're stupid, right? But this is funny when gay people say, oh, how could you be, how could you be for a conservative? How could you be Catholic and be, be, be gay? I say, well, let me explain something to you. you. You should know this. The first countries in the world that had any gay rights were Christian majority countries. In fact, the only countries in the world that have gay rights, as far as I know, are, I think, are Christian, Catholic, and one Jewish state in Israel. Right? And, 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 and all the other Seven Islamic countries in the world, how many of them have gay rights at all? Gay, gay rights parades? Zero. Zero. None of them have it. Okay? If you try doing it, you'll be arrested and put in jail. They throw us up at buildings for fun. And likewise, socialists. Radical socialist Islam countries. Radicals were under 18. Radicals were under 18. Or they, 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 they try to turn us into uh, women so they can. That is yeah. okay. Well, they cut off so their to, okay. to that point, socialist countries also have no gay rights. So it's, isn't it bizarre that they're saying, how could you be for America and be for, be for capitalism and be for Christianity, and yet that's the only place gays have their rights on planet Earth? That's a conversation. It makes no sense. That's a conversation we should be talking about, actually. We really should talk about, as Americans, what we can do um, for the criminalization of homosexuality worldwide, because every single Muslim country is killing us. Every single Muslim country. They're not just killing us. They're not, they're not all killing. killing. They're not all killing. There's, okay, to give Indonesia. Okay, it Indonesia might be against Sharia law, but the, Indonesia, you get 20 years in prison, but they drag you in the truck first. Okay, so whatever. So the case, uh, the case of the matter is though that we need to talk about those kind of conversations, and because there's people around the world dying because they're just simply gay. But this is not just the LGBT that are being killed there in the Middle East. It's also Christians right now. They're doing a religious, religious cleanse. So we need to come together more than ever right now. And do you think ever maybe that's re the reason why they're tearing us apart? They always want Christians against gays. Gays against Christians constantly, constantly. We should never let them win. Question back.
they're killing, they're killing gays in Venezuela? saying 
um, I'm, I'm trans, or I'm trans this, I'm um, pansexual, I'm all these different genders. And it, that video resonated with a lot of people, and especially people on the left who already, who already was uh, like um, looking for ways to still continue to fight or be, be victimized. Yeah, and so it was a perfect ploy for them to jump on as um, the left, and they did that, and now they're weaponizing my community and making us seem like we are all weapons to be thrown at Republicans. And that's, you know, it, it's incredible. But no, I, I definitely agree with you on that.